good evening. Tonight I shall be continuing the story I have written. For this part I have requested the role and assistance of one person in particular. This recording I have assist I've assumed was going to be fun. I'll let you know once I'm finished with the recording and my outro. Part 4 of I Work for the Paranormal FBI Hey there, Lynch here. I hope you're doing well because I'm not. I'm in quite the grumpy mood right now. That explanation can wait though. Selena had recently asked me for a favor. Now I suck at keeping secrets. If you told me something, I'd probably not shut up about it and post it on here or something. To keep in absolute secrecy, she threatened to break both my legs and remaining arm. I'll update you on that when she says I can. Something strange has happened here. We've had an entire shift of our superiors and higher-ups. I know this because their files appeared on my desk today. On top of the stacked folders was a note that read, KIA, Vanish Immediately. Here we use the term vanish to erase any and all history both physical and digital of their existence. Their bodies are taken care of by someone else, I'm not sure who though. Usually whenever they shift a supervisor's position, it's one at a time. It gives the current supervisors time to train the newbie when seeing if they're fit for the job. Never, and I mean never, had every single person been replaced all at once. I suspect it'll take quite some time to shift to normality. Anything from a couple months to a year. Which gives me some time to laze around on the internet. Speaking of which, something very interesting happened. So I found another series of posts online, and it rubbed me the wrong way. Apparently this guy is roommates with one of the most infamous paranormals in history. Good old Dark Tentacles Mr. No Face. Maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't. This isn't going to be one of my normal scriptings, since this happened recently. That, and I actually wasn't assigned to script their interrogation. Like hell I'd let someone else script this. I had a bone to pick with this guy and I wanted answers. I swung open the door to the room overseeing the interrogation. Fred, the current script, looked at me in confusion. You've been reassigned, Fred. I'm taking this one. Go and take the rest of the day off. He looked at me with suspicion, but nodded and left quickly. I overheard him mentioning something about a lucky lady he's going to meet. I didn't exactly catch it. My mind was preoccupied. Joseph, a man that had moved in with a paranormal being. At the time, they didn't realize who or what their roommate was. Soon after he found out, he was introduced to many more of these things, one of which murdered his wife. Instead of wanting vengeance from the one who did it, they went after the organization who hired them. Due to Joseph's interference with one of our main partners, we step in questioning him. I didn't bother to see who was interrogating Joseph. I just wanted to listen. I don't care, child. I refuse to call him that name. It doesn't suit what kind of creature he truly is. Out of respect, I'll call him Kent. Happy? The way I see it, you owe it to me to call him Terry. You guys are the ones who forced me to come here. Hell, I could have just called up Abraham or Megami or someone to get you to dickwads off my tits. I doubt he and his companions would have any respect or any desire to protect your life. A mere human. Megami is a bit iffy, but she didn't let those marine guys leave me behind. I think Abraham is even friends with one of them. I'm pretty sure his name is Dexter. So Abraham probably has connections to the other two. Anyway, my point is, I know plenty of entities that would help me if I really wanted them to. In our report, we've not been able to find the three operatives who coincidentally found you. Not even their organization came up. Well, technically there were four to begin with. But some stuff happened and Terry killed one of them, but yeah, I couldn't find anything on them either. Very well. We have ways to find out. Now, I'm certain you can keep a secret, correct? I don't make promises like that unless I know what I'm signing myself up for. You may not have a choice in this matter. 
Given your experience with these beings, we would find it most beneficial if you were to take a job with us. Of course, you would be sworn to absolute secrecy. Well? Hmm. How do I put this simply? One sec. Let me think. Oh, I know! Fuck that shit! The interrogator sighed deeply. I am losing my patience, child. A simple yes or no shall suffice. Sorry, I thought I made myself clear. That would be a no from me. That wasn't so hard, was it? Fine. We're done here. Oh, hell no. I'm not down here just to hear a few questions. The bane of my jealousy sat one sheet of glass away and I would be damned if I didn't get the answers I wanted. I violently opened the door and walked in the interrogation room without a care. The interrogator was about to speak until they saw the rage in my face. Sorry, not sorry. I still have a few questions I want to ask. You can script this one for the records. I sat across from the bane of my existence. His smug grin fueled my rage, yet I withheld my murderous desire. They sighed with impatience. <sighs> Another one? Come on. Nice to finally meet you, Joe. I've read up on your background, even your posts online. Strange how they seem to have been hidden from everyone else's prying eyes. First off, I know I'm going to sound like the doc here, but don't call me Joe. As for it being hidden from people, I wouldn't exactly agree with that. I mean, Terry found it, so it can't be that hard to find. Fine. Joseph, if they're that easy to find, then someone is choosing to hide them from our servers. I look into that. As for your posts themselves, one, how are you still alive after all of that? And two, have you received any punishments from your posts at all? Someone wanting you to keep these things a secret, perhaps? Well, if you did actually read the posts, then you should know that I wasn't alone. I went into the bunker with Terry and some other entities. Uh, had I been alone, I could understand your confusion. But seriously, did, did you actually do any research on the entities I was with? You guys are basically the men in black. Don't you dare compare us to those space missionaries. Had it occurred to you the use of that bunker? Why monsters had targets to kill, and not humans not carrying out the work instead? And you and your goons destroyed one of our favorite bases. If it was one of your bases, why were some of the United States superhuman guys there to take the leader? It's hard to keep track of all these story arcs. I'm the one asking questions here. It's normal for us to deal with other organizations to take out unruly employees who begin to have their own plans. I'm not even sure why he killed your wife. The mention of Joseph's wife made him glare at me. His joking habits were no longer present. Hey, don't bring her into this. Shouldn't this interview just be about what happened that night? Of course it should be, but you were asked these questions already. People get bored of answering the same questions over and over, which is why I wanted to personally talk to you. An air of regret was held as I tried to form my reason for being here. Well then, as for your second question, that would have to be a no. Unless you count Terry making fun of my childhood karate lessons. No punishment for posting it online? So you've gotten off scot-free. To be honest, I'm jealous. My gaze shifted to the cast around my broken arm. Oh, I get it! You must be doing the same shtick then, uh huh? But since you work for the government, you get punished for doing it. Since you work in a paranormal division of the government, you can't even tell anyone in the land of the living how your arm got broken. I'm sure this Dexter you mentioned could find a way to tell you that story. Also, you hit the nail right on the head. So, Mr. Immortal Joseph, how and why? I prefer the term semi-immortal, but how and why what? How did you find yourself in this paranormal world? Before your wife, before Terry, 
and why do you choose to continue in it instead of normality? Well, you could say it's hard with my wife when... He took a sip from his water. <clears throat> when Jeff killed her. A few months later, I just needed somewhere to live for cheap. Found a good deal and took it. That's why I met Terry. He was pretty cool. A closet weeb, but aren't we all? I rubbed the back of my neck in embarrassment. Perhaps some of us are willing to admit having ancient sword collections. By the way, by weeb anime posters, are you referring to anything specific? Fuck! Never saw them when I beat Terry at magic since Abraham sent us, uh... Never mind. But, back to the topic at hand. I choose to stick with the paranormal life because at this point I think I'm a little too deep to get out. Also, life is a whole hell of a lot more interesting when you get to meet things like skinwalkers and sirens on a daily basis. Fair enough. Being too deep within this world only gets you one out. Not a pleasant option. You've answered the questions of working here. You like your freedom. Wise decision. I glanced through the glass at the scriptwriter, waved my hand over my neck telling him to cut off my last phrase. I looked back to Joseph as he poses where I suspect are his last words here. What's with all this PFBI stuff anyway? Make a lot more sense if it were FBPI. Think about it. Federal Bureau of Paranormal Investigation sounds way better than Paranormal Federal Bureau of Investigation. Makes you guys sound like you're all paranormal rather than you research paranormal phenomena. I stared at Joseph blankly for several seconds. My slack jaw felt like it could hit the table. Are you trying to get me killed? How? Was switching around the letters alone not enough for secrecy? And you figured it out? That easily? Called it. I know the government is stupid, but there's no way they're that stupid. <sighs> You'd be surprised. No one here has found your posts. Otherwise, they'd have the answers and you wouldn't be here. Either people here are dumb as hell, or someone hacked us to hide them. He leaned back in his chair, letting out a sigh. Uh, are we done here then? Doc says I need to take it easy, and this isn't exactly the vacation of my dreams. You still have 12 hours remaining for your detainment. Then we shall return your belongings and you may return home. Can't have you calling the paranormal Avengers on us. Well, are you going to keep asking me questions, or what then, Mr. Boss Man? I turned back towards the glass, signaling, signaling that the interrogation was over. Afterwards, Joseph and I sat for a couple hours more and talked about anything and everything. I left soon after allowing him to sleep for the rest of his stay. Confronting the target of my hatred felt enlightening, strangely enough. Not sure for how much longer I can mess around until the new superior settle everything. Oh well, I've got more posts to find online. Until next time, I'm your friendly PFBI guy. Quite interesting, this part. Sophil Shotbot is the author for Ah, uh, My Roommate is Slenderman. It has been narrated online already. Uh, I believe halfway through the entire series by, uh, Nature's Temper. I'll see if I can remember to leave a link in the description. For Shadbot here, uh, he's the one that I, I actually shared my first story with, and ever since then we've basically, basically been writing stories together within the same universe. Of the first collaborative effort within our writings, this one was fun as hell to write, and even narrate. Uh, you may not be aware, but the written story is further along than the narrated story. But, if you don't like spoilers, then congratulations. You have more patience than I do. As always, I want to thank you for being here, spending time out of your day, night or evening. 
and remember, there's so much we've yet to understand in this world. Ha 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 